all. Now that I have it working good, I'm just gonna shoot a few things that changed. Well, the floppy drive is still dead, but I'm just gonna leave it in there since I don't really use it that much. Because all my old, old games we played on a another machine I'm building. This machine, I'm playing games that are new enough to just barely have come out on CD-ROM. So I have this, what is it, 48 speed CD-ROM drive. That's pretty pathetic. Even that one has a faster drive. It's a 50 speed. Something like 48 speed. So yeah, um, it's missing the, I don't know, what am I doing, <laughs> pointing at that for, um, oh, it broke something, uh, anyway on the front, it's an IBM case, so this computer's part IBM, part HP, part Acer, it's the Frank and PC, so it's an IBM Navista case, it used to be an 8305, 21G, that one's the exact identical model to what this one used to be before. The board on this one crapped out. Well, it didn't crap out, it just quit, but, you know, whatever. I retired it. Uh, yeah, there's the power button. Those LEDs won't work, because I don't have them hooked up. Because I just have that placed over the power header, because it's a two-pin power header. Just That's just randomly out in the open with no pins beside it, so I just put it down on the right pins until I got the button right. So I need the power button more than anything else. Because I don't need, I know if it's running because it's freaking loud, and I know when it's accessing the hard drive because the hard drive is loud too. You can hear it. Um, yeah. There's just a floppy drive cutout, and it has a white drive in it, but you won't be able to tell because it's just the slot button there. Um, this is broken. You can see it's not level. It's supposed to be uh, like, like that. But no, it just kind of around. I mean, I could just put it on the top and it would be solid, but I don't want the drive on the bottom, so, yeah. See, that one's broken, too. It's, it's actually hard to find a broken on, but I guess they're more common than I thought. Most of the ones I see aren't broken. It's just the ones I have. Just these two are the only ones I've ever seen that are like this. The rest of them I've seen are owned have all been perfectly fine. Kind of weird. Someone must have been really mad and hit it. It just broke the tab off right here. Because this cover's fine. I could put it up there and it'd be fine. But yeah. So yeah, it has a vent on the side for airflow. Let's just set that over there. Um, it has the internal PC speaker, which isn't hooked up to anything. Yeah. Piece of shit. It has USB ports, which don't reach all the way over here to the USB header. Oh well, who needs USB? I have two ports on the back, and it doesn't even have drivers that work, so I don't really care. I can't even use the ones in the back, so it doesn't matter. Uh, just the Kuga Master fan here. Delta power supply. 180 watts is good enough to power this system. It has this fan here, but I can't use it because there's no fan header. See this three-pin fan header? Fan? There's no three-pin fan header on this board except for the one. There's not even a two-pin fan header. That's the only fan header on the entire board. That looks like a fan header, but it's actually a wake on... No, it's a modem input for a modem. And this is a wake on LAN connector. It's not a fan connector because it has four... Well, it has three pins, but I mean, it's not even the same kind of pin layout thing. So yeah, only one fan header on the whole board. I don't know why they did that, but I don't need it because I got this one exhausting out through the back of the power supply. So it's taking the hot air from the CPU and throwing it out the back. So I don't need another exhaust over here. In fact, let's take that out right now. If it can do so. front. This is the one thing I like about these um, silent clips. You can just pull it out. Yeah, right.
right, put this in my uh, main computer as a chipset cooler because it's just the right size to fit on the chipset heatsink because it's got a huge freaking chipset heatsink. It's an aftermarket one. Or actually, no, I think it's a little smaller. That actually, yeah, it is. That fan would be perfect for the chipset cooler on my main computer. This, I don't know, I'll just put it underneath the graphics card to put it like upside down so it can exhaust cold air onto the graphics card because it gets really hot. So yeah, there. Now we have more room in this case for nothing, I guess. I know I could put a second CD drive in. I was actually going to put this DVD drive in, but it's white. Oh well. I was going to send and paint it. You can see I started sanding it, but I decided, like, why the hell am I doing this? I could use the paint for something else. Like painting the cover here, which was what I was planning on doing. But anyway, I didn't care enough, so. I have enough black drives. Yeah. Um, back, that's a vented PCI slot. Because I didn't have any more of these IBM ones, so I just took one of these for my junk pile. Just give it some more airflow, I guess, if, as if it didn't have enough. From there, there, the front of the case is all vented. Because you can, like, stick your finger. The air is actually designed to be pulled underneath the floppy drive and in through the sides, like right here through these vents here because you can see it's vented along the bottom and up the side so it vent ends up going like this so you get air coming in through here and that's pretty much what that exhaust fan over there would do it would suck air into the front or wherever and pull it back I'm gonna make this video way too long Now it's all set up. <laughs> Looks quite odd with this stripping monitor sitting on top of it. They were shipped with those smaller ones. But anyway. Let's turn it on. It has sound. Her drive is very, very loud. It's certainly not the loudest one I have, but it's the loudest, newish one. Well, not really new, but if you get the point, so. Acer motherboard and an H no oh, Jesus Christ Acer motherboard and an IBM case with an HP floppy drive and an HP CPU so that's what makes it part HP that's yeah HP CPU because it came from that HP board it's not really made by HP though that's from an HP floppy drive is from an HP2. How odd. So it's a Franken PC. Not really though, that one's the Franken PC over there. But anyway. And <laughs> this is the funny part. It's an IBM NetVista case with an IBM Aptiva Windows installation. IBM Aptiva. <laughs> There's the IBM logo. 
Pentium Pro, that's not true. So, yeah. DirectX Diagnostics, Intel Pentium 2 MMX, Catamai Cat Core, 128 megs of RAM. It's not a Catamai Core, actually, it's a Celeron. But it has MMX. And then, it's pretty much Pentium 2 based, so I guess it's somewhat accurate. Mm, a few bad drivers. And it doesn't lock up anymore since I put that um, Pentium 2 in there. Every Pentium 3 I tried would just lock up. Must have been a reading or something, I don't know. Even though the D-Man 216 sent me seemed to lock it up, so I have no idea what's wrong with it. I think my burnt chip just might be fine. Because it does work. And what not. So install BF7-Zip because the file archiving program that came with it sucked. Accessories... Games and I start DOS mode games with yes, blah, blah, blah. multimedia system tools, which seem to be corrupt. <laughs> oh, God, uh, mm -hmm. just the usual crap. And it has Microsoft Office, you can see Excel, PowerPoint, Word. Uh, probably could go on the internet, but I'm not going to try. It has Acrobat. 3.1 and Acrobat 4.0. I installed 4.0 and I just forgot to take 3.1 off. IBM antivirus that came with the thing. Aptiva desktop customization stuff, which you can make animated, animated, animated icons and stuff. HP CD Writer Plus. That's for the HP CD Writer Plus that is not in this computer. Mm -hmm -hmm. Usual stuff. Quick time. Actually, I'm just gonna go. Usual. Control panel here. Oh, what the hell was I doing? Um, <laughs> Jesus. I can never remember what I'm about to do. Yeah, here's the sound card. It's old, but. It works. 3Com Usynth. IBM 3Com Usynth. Familiar? Anyway. Yeah. Where is it? Aha. Apple QuickTime for Windows. Windows 95 4.0. Processors are Pentium. Yeah, sure, let's go with that. SVGA. Thousands of colors at, an eight, at a blistering 800 by 600 resolution. CD ROMs drive G. I'll show you why in a minute. Set my blah blah blah. Okay. So we can just close that out. Of course, we have Intel graphics technology. Jesus, this resolution, or this refresh rate's bad. Aptiva desktop customization. I figured out why the start menu banner is missing. Somebody removed it since I owned the computer, so. Bastards. Really nice feature. Hmm. Screensaver's really cool. This is what came with it, so. High color. Damn it. I forgot to check the video acceleration. Oh well, whatever. Maybe it says here. No, it doesn't. Oh well. Too bad. We'll play games. 
although not very well. Yeah. This is, I have a bunch of partitions. That shows you what I paid for the hard drive back in the day, that drive label right there. <laughs> DOS games in here. I don't think I have anything good in here. No, I don't. Oh, I do have one game, I think. Some games, I think. Oh, Jazz Jackrabbit. Um, what? Really? Okay. Didn't seem to work. Sound card, some blaster clone, yes, high quality, excellent save, this one just again. Really? <laughs> Jesus. Of course it's not going to work when I want it to. See what else can I find on here? Don't have very many games on here because I haven't really been doing much with it yet. Yeah, Microsoft Word, I guess. It works and it's Microsoft Word. Microsoft sound. No, I don't really want to save. Mm -hmm. Let's shut it down. That's it.